folks, what's going on there? Ish. It's the Lucas J Show. You are watching the Dan K Show. that this week is the Lucas J Show. It's all about me this week. I get to pick the topics. I get to lead the discussions. All thanks to Coach Mike Anderson, Coach Jim Hankel, and Team National, the NCDC, winning my second show for the second year in a row. But before we get into some stuff I want to talk about real quick that I don't want to take too long about, but I think is important, we go to the man on my right, the man whose namesake was on the show until this week, the man with the incredible hair, the incredible suits, and the easiest man to find in a hockey rink, it's Dan K. Dan, welcome to the show. I'm excited to be here, Lucas. You know, I am very, very uncomfortable in this role, and I feel I'm going to be a lot more John Madden than I am uh, John Gruden. Well, you get to really have your color commentator personality come out today, so it'll be, it'll be fun for everybody. I don't know what to do with my hands. You just keep them at your sides, and you wait until you're, you're called, and then you speak. It feels be... like an alternate timeline. I feel like I'm in Rick and Morty. <laughs> uh, you, you'll figure it out. So, instead of the three things this week, we're going to go to some stuff I want to talk about real quick. The first thing I want to talk about real quick, we are getting ready to go to Wisconsin. We have been waiting and waiting to get out there, and finally, this weekend, by the time you guys are watching this video, we are already en route to cover the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings, taking on the Hudson Havoc. That game will be Saturday night with us on the broadcast, 7 p.m. Central Time. That's going to be a fun one. You can go check out a story on dankshow.com about it. Thing number two of some stuff I want to talk about. So the midget showcases this weekend, and there was a ton of talent on display. Some highlights coming out of those divisions. In the 16U, Dan, the Rockets Hockey Club Black still undefeated. 16-0, and the 18U Aviators beat Northwood Prep on the back of an incredible 52 saves on 52 shots performance by Trevor Jewell. Just goes to show you that just because you put the puck on net, a good goaltender will get you a win. And the last thing I want to talk about real quick, Dan, is the pesky NCDC division. They can't seem to figure out exactly how to win, how to win consistently, who they want to be, who they're better than. Everyone's beaten up on everybody, but teams are surging, teams are dropping, and this continues to be the most interesting division in the USPHL, I think, right now. And with that, let's start talking about some of these teams, Dan. We had some interesting predictions uh, a couple weeks ago about the NCDC. Yeah. You know, how have your thoughts changed after seeing uh, some stuff going on this weekend? I mean, what you're really starting to see is an Islanders hockey club team, Lucas, and I think you've got some notes on these guys as well. This Islanders hockey club team, they're young, they're talented, they're skilled, but I don't think everyone had bought in yet early in the year. It's tough. When you're young, you want to get out there, you want to be the skill guy. You want to be the guy putting a puck in the net. You want to be the difference maker. But sometimes being a difference maker is the little things. It's those tiny moments on the ice. It's those board battles. It's that big pass. It's that big hit. It's, it's being in the right place without the puck and skating well on your own, and uh, along with everything else. And the Islanders hockey club team has figured that out of late. Yeah, they certainly have. I mean, them and Pal have had remarkably similar surges in the last 10 games. And I think it's based off of, I think, one word, Dan, it's consistency. Yep. And, and I think one of those things that goes along with that, interestingly enough, shot accuracy. And, and let's dive into this a little bit, because I think this is the most interesting part of the surge in the NCDC. Pal Junior Islanders, Islanders Hockey Club. Both teams averaging 70% shot accuracy from the blue line. Now, what does that mean? That means that they're getting shots on net from outside the, or from near the blue line, they're expanding the offensive zone, they're taking advantage of that space, yep. and, and how easy does that make the game when you spread that four or five man defensive unit out and you can shoot from all areas of the offensive zone? Yeah, and it, what it does is it opens up everything, right? And you know, a lot of people talk about the ability for the netminder to see the puck, but when you're shooting consistently from the blue line, 
What it allows you to do is you shoot early, you shoot often, then the bodies get in front. You get in shooting lanes. You get in the path of the netminder. And Lucas, you talk about consistency. What do I always say? What is my mantra? Consistency is being consistently consistent. Thanks, John. And very Madden. <laughs> That's our throwback to a little uh, late 90s there. That's very good. Madden, uh, Madden football. But, uh, yeah, one of the other interesting things when you look at these two teams is their average shots on goal differential plus six over the last ten games. So that's not a past weekend. That's not even a past month, really. That's the last ten games. So what does that mean for these two teams who are surging? They're shooting more than the opposing teams, and more of those shots are getting on net for either goals or second-chance opportunities. So you talk about what makes a team successful in the long run, it's just shots on net. You yep. put the puck on net more often, you're going to create more chances. And I think that's what you talk about the rise, and you have to talk about kind of the struggles of, of two teams. But it's the reason we talk about them is because it's two teams who I think we're both relatively certain are going to be part of this playoff picture. The Twin City Thunder and the Northern Cyclones have been struggling but I think they can right the ship and prime themselves for a run. Here's what I would say about the Twin City Thunder first. We'll start there. This team doesn't have the flash. They don't have the panache. They don't have that Dan K. show blazer style of offensive attack right now. It is a team effort, but it is a slog when you get on the ice with them, especially on the home rink. This team is just tough to deal with. They score the dirty ones when they need to, and right now they're a team you don't want to play. You just don't want to get matched up with them. If you're one of these top sides, you see them sitting in the seventh seed right now. They play the Junior Bruins. I can guarantee you Mike Anderson wants nothing to do with a Doug Friedman side heading into Marlboro on the first weekend of that playoff season. This is, this is going to be so important just the way that they play as a team. And you look talk about team play, it's the defense of the Cyclones that carries them everywhere. So for me, you know, having trouble generating offense when you're a team that relies so heavily on the defensive side, that's just part of the game. You know what I mean? It comes with the territory. How many games did we watch John Tortorella win in his career with the Tampa Bay Lightning, with the New York Rangers, now with the Columbus Blue Jackets? Didn't win much up in Vancouver. That didn't go as well. But how many times have you seen he wins those one nothing battles? He mm -hmm. wins those 2-1 games, and it's okay to win that way. I don't think that's a big problem. No, and I think that's one of those things you talk about consistency. Those are the things that work themselves out. I think the biggest issue with Twin City Thunder right now is they're taking too many penalties. You know, they're up there in the double digit stand around that 20, 25 minutes a game, uh, you know, penalty wise. That's not a good spot to be in, especially in the NCDC. And for the, the Northern Cyclones, they're having trouble generating offense from anywhere except the slot and right in front of the net. A good majority of their goals are being scored right in front of the net, those greasy goals we like to talk about so mm -hmm. much. And that really helps you. I think we saw it last year in the playoffs, especially against the Jersey Hitmen. You're able to create traffic in front of the net. But when you've still got a bunch of games left on your schedule, that is a tough, demanding, exhausting style to play. Leave it up to no one else but Bill Flanagan to, to get those guys going in the right direction. But I think, I think here's the bottom line right now in the NCDC, is if you can generate offense from the sides and from the blue line, right now at this point in the season, those teams are seeing a lot of success. Teams that are focusing or having trouble focusing on the, the slot or the area in front of the net or having trouble getting that accuracy from the blue line, yep. I think they're the ones that are struggling right now. But if there's anything we've learned from the NCDC, Dan, I mean, these points... Uh, they're almost meaningless right now because you've got teams that are one point difference, two point difference, could jump you almost four or five slots. I thought you were going to say if there's anything we learned, it's that the Jersey Hitmen are remarkably good. Because yes. You look at that team at the top of this thing right now, and this tends to happen. This tends to happen in every sport league, right? You see it in basketball, you see it in hockey. When you have that runaway great team, and it happened with the Lightning last year. The Lightning and Hitman last year were very similar to one another. You know, that, that first round exit for both sides, mm -hmm. that, a surprising first round exit, but. You almost stop talking about them because you just you expect them to be there, and you know they're there, and you kind of start talking about 1B, 1C, 1D, rather than number one. And right now, this Hitmen team, I mean, 32, 3, 1, and 2, have only lost three times in regulation, and I, they're going to be a tough out for anybody. And we still live in a world, Dan, where the Junior Bruins could surpass them and take that number one spot. The NCDC continues to be an interesting division of hockey to watch. We'll certainly be following it down the stretch. But for now, Dan, it's time to move into a quick break and then back to talk about the philosophy of defense. I hate philosophy. And defense.
The Dan K Show is coming to your town. The Dan K Show, covering everything USPHL from the NCDC Premier and Elite. The Dan K Show, starring Dan K and Lucas Jones. Welcome back, folks. And now it's time to talk about a topic that's near and dear to my heart defense and goaltending, which are the two most important parts of a team's defense. Dan, it's time to dive in here, especially as we get towards the playoffs and inevitably the championships, to talk about the idea that defense wins championships. And I have a couple of examples. You know, first let's talk about the Pittsburgh Vengeance. They're still ahead in the Great Lakes Division, I think on the back of their defense, which is in the best, the best in their division. And that's even considering they've got a ton of tough teams in that division, in a high-scoring division, especially with the Metro Jets in it. Uh, this is a team that's beat the Rockets once, who have been surging. The Skipjacks twice, another surging team, and they've been limiting their opponents in their last 10 games to a goal and a half per game over 10. They're always ahead in time on attack in the offensive zone, and they're under 10 penalty minutes a game, so this is a team whose defense creates offense. Then we go to a game that we're going to have a really great privilege to call this weekend, the River Kings and the Havoc. Yep. The two best defenses... In the Premier Midwest West, also the top teams in the Premier Midwest West. You go to the Elite Southeast, you have the Rush and the Generals, the two best defenses in the Elite Southeast, the two top teams in the Elite Southeast. So, Dan, I thought it'd be interesting to have a little discussion here about why teams that are successful on defense are usually successful in the division, regardless of their offensive potential. Well, first of all, I mean, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, right? There's, there's a lot of ways to do it. And you see a team like the Aviators on the other side, they've won their last 11 straight. And those guys, I mean, 210 goals scored for them. But, Lucas, the big thing, the big thing that makes defense such a success creator in the game of hockey is hockey defense, unless you've got an absolutely unbelievable netminder, even when you do sometimes, it's a team effort. It takes a team effort. It takes bodies in front. You've got to be in passing lanes. It's discipline. It's sticking to your systems. It's having defensemen who aren't out there just roving and leaving people out hanging. You know, Everybody's had that D partner who they just know this thing's going to be a rodeo, man. It's going to be a gong show type of day. He's leaving you in the dust, and you're on your own on the two-on-ones all day long. It's a team effort, and it takes everybody buying into a program, buying into a system, buying into an idea that blocking a puck is just as good as scoring one, that that jumping a passing lane is just as good as making a big pass, and that a goaltender mindset of nothing's getting by me. And and this is these are teams that have figured that out this year, and that doesn't just take talent. That takes effort, and it takes a little bit of something, a little bit of I don't know what, as they say en français. And these teams right now have mastered that. You look at a team like the Rush, you look at a team like the River Kings, you look at a team with the Havoc, their offense is created by defense. It's created by the team defense. They get out in the break, and they absolutely punish you when you turn the puck over. Yeah, I mean, that, that, is, that is true. You know, And sometimes a team's overwhelming downhill skating offense is a defense's best friend. Yep. But you know, it, it's something that sort of rears its head, especially in Nationals, where that style of play is fine, and that will get you through the regular season. But how many times have we seen these downhill skating teams they get run up against these physical opponents who clog up the neutral zone. They can't get going. They end up losing. Yep. You know, and I'm one. Of, I'm a proponent of, of net first team building. I, I love the the well known quote. I think at this point that goaltending 75% of hockey, unless you don't have it, at which point it becomes 100% <laughs> of the game of hockey. And you know, uh, two goaltenders is so important going forward. But we talked about in the last segment about how teams that can spread your defense apart are the teams that are successful. So it stands to reason that if you have defensemen that are not afraid to get out there and chase the puck, defensemen that are able to block shots, and most importantly, the best way to play defense, as we always say, is 200 feet from your own net. Yep. And we've seen teams who have good defensemen that can read the game, they're game managers, because you want to have defensemen crashing the net because you need that physicality, but if you crash the net in the wrong situation, you get hung out to dry, and you yeah. get those three-on-one or, or two-on-none breakaway opportunities. So I just think the teams that are able to play good defense and have smart defensemen who don't show up on the score sheet all that often and are able to get themselves into position 
are just going to be more successful than teams that rely solely on their offense. You can't even forget it. You can't forget about the Metro Jets. I feel like we've forgotten about them in this conversation as well. Second place again behind those Pittsburgh Vengeance, a game in hand on them. Four points behind them, though. They'll have to get two wins back somewhere along the line to get into that first place spot. It's a team that scored 211. They've only allowed 75. And you look in that, you want to talk about the two goaltender mentality. They got Augustine, and they've got the Mack truck, Mackis Turner, man, who's tur a game turner, a game changer, a page turner, man. That's the type of book you start reading, you're reading the whole thing cover to cover. And Mackis Turner gets the job done for these guys, along with Augustine. And these two, that two-headed monster there for the Metro Jets, you can't say enough about it. You got guys like Metro out there buzzing. The boys in Pittsburgh are buzzing seven straight. 11 straight for the New York Aviators. Lucas, man, this premiere is going anyway. And next week, we've got ourselves a Dan Casio Power Rankings. We do, and it's certainly going to be interesting. And I think it's funny when we, we kind of have this back and forth about defense versus offense. You look at the team in the premiere, that's been doing it all yep. is the Rockets Hockey Club. Yep. 200, over 200 goals for and 70 goals against. So you're talking about a goal differential that's higher than some teams' goal totals this season. And, it, and I just think it's on the back of their defense because we've seen teams, again, that are downhill skating like the Rockets, but that give up a ton of goals on the back end. And the Rockets, they have good defensemen. They have a good game plan. It's about game managers, and, and a lot of that falls down to their goaltender, uh, Gabriel Pigeon, 2.21 goals against average, 0.923 saves percentage. The goaltender is so important, yep. but I, I think one of the best examples of what you talked about before, mm -hmm. this buying into the system mentality, is why a team like the Islanders Hockey Club, for instance, especially in the NCDC, every season, what do we say about IHC? Yeah, they're off to a little bit of a slow start, surprising. Yep. And then what happens every single winter break? Yep. This team surges and go and hits the top of the NCDC division and never looks back. Buy into the system, you run those systems, you get smart game managing players, you will win hockey games. I'll tell you that pigeon in net for the Rockets is giving up crumbs when it comes to goals right now, man. This is a guy who is flying high. He is absolutely buzzing, man. This is the white dove of goaltenders when you you release this guy and he is just free to make stops man he's seeing seeds in net and he is stopping every single one of them you cannot cage the talent of this pigeon gabriel pigeon man this guy wings like a bird pigeon certainly no common bird of a goaltender there dan and and he's one of the reasons why this rockets hockey club team is so successful and folks like if you've watched the show you know that i can talk about defense forever i can talk about goaltending forever but the bottom line here is that the proof is in the pudding, as they say. And when it gets time for nationals... That's what was in the pudding? I thought it was chocolate. Oh, no. It's, I make all my pudding with proof. Nice. Yeah. Delicious. It adds that little uh, je ne sais quoi. I don't know what that means. The proof is in the pudding, folks. And when it gets time to nationals and playoffs and that Deneen Cup run, the offense takes a backseat to defense, and you will see it work itself out. I've never really given guarantees on this show. Because I don't really have that sort of bravado that requires that I guarantee everything I say. But I will guarantee you this. Defense wins championships. You will see it in the Elite. You will see it in the Premier. And you will see it in the NCDC. One of the few times where this guy's going to be right. Welcome to the Empty Net. to talk a little bit here. Lucas is letting me lead the Lucas J Show empty net so graciously solely because he doesn't have his glasses currently. So I thank you for that. I thank you for letting me talk for a moment here. A win streak for the New York Aviators, which we wrote about last week, and it continues, and I'm excited to see where they end up in our power rankings next week. So am I. I think this is going to be an interesting power rankings because you've got teams like the Aviators who haven't been involved yet still involved, while the teams who are involved won't stop winning either. So we're going to be in a situation where we might have 21 or 22 teams vying for 10 spots. Remember? Continuing, the Wisconsin Rapids River Kings just announced that we're coming. We're coming to the Dan, the Dan K Show's going to Wisconsin. How excited are you for Wisconsin Rapids? Wisconsin is the nexus of many of my favorite things. Cheese curds, New Glarus Spotted Cow, and Grade A Hockey. I am excited. 
was to get to uh, Wisconsin Rapids. That was three? That was three. Count, counted five. Let's keep going here. Let's move down the list because next up, the zookeeper wrote out to us that Zook got the hattie. Zook with the hat trick for the Northern Cyclones. Yeah, I mean, that's that's so cool. I, you know, to, to be able to get that hat trick is cool enough, but the little moves he puts on to be able to get that one in, I mean, that's a great clip. Thanks for sending that to us. I mean, he got held on to. He got dragged. He got hit. He's fallen down. He scores a thing with one hand. Zook, man, a little bit of those wrist curls I'm seeing. You know what I mean? That get that gets the boys going there with the big, the big powerful arms. That one-handed goal, man, that is nothing, nothing to... to not celebrate right there an incredible play number three the final portion of the empty net here coach Wagenbach here this guy is an absolute beauty and he took the boys out for some bonding and some paintball literally right down the street from the Dan K show coach we love paintball we enjoy paintballing and we live in New Jersey give us a call hey let us know we'd love to come out how about this It'll be the Dan K Show team. It'll be me, Dan, and producer Lena, who will be angry that we've involved her in this. She doesn't want anything to do against your entire team in a game of speedball. We will lose, but it will be fun talking about things that are fun. Dan, how fun was the Lucas Jake Show? I mean, I got to do the intro, which was silent, the way I enjoy it. I got to talk about stuff that I wanted to talk about. We talked about defense. We did a deep dive into statistics and a whole bunch of math. This was everything I could have wanted in a show. I mean, what are you going to say about that? Folks, this has been so much fun. I would like to give a huge shout out to Team National and especially Coach Mike Anderson and Coach Jim Henkel for winning me this opportunity. Two of my favorite coaches in the entire NCDC. I'll just go ahead and move myself into center frame to deliver this, this final speech. We can't wait to get to Wisconsin. We can't wait to continue covering the entirety of the USPHL. And folks, whether it's in our backyard or in your backyard, we love to yell about hockey. So you let us know where we should go yell about hockey. You can tweet to us. You can reach out to us on Facebook, on Instagram, and use the contact form on dankshow.com. Make sure to use one of those four things to let us know who we should talk about or where we should go next. My name is Lucas Jones, and for this edition of the Lucas J Show... I'm signing off. This is I want my show back. Now you're not getting it back. It's I want it back. Now. Nope. It's mine. I love this. This is great. Oh, man. Center stage, all the lights on me, two laptops. I can dual wield laptops for maximum stats. This is incredible. This is the worst. I might do my own show next week. Lucas J Show. Four hours of math. No one would watch that. <laughs>